So our second paper, the title is Learning Object Grasping for Soft Robot Hands, and will be presented by Chen Yun Chou. So welcome the speaker. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chang Yun Choi. Uh, today I'm going to talk about learning object grasping for soft robot hands. Uh, this is joint work with Rico Sprouting, Joseph Del Preto, and, uh, and Daniela Ruth, all from MIT CCL. So let's start with an interesting video of Baymax from Big Hero 6. Uh, one of the most important features of Baymax is its compliant body. And because the body is compliant, the unexpected, unexpected collision with the chair doesn't really bother Baymax. It has really nice hand-eye coordination and compliant main players, uh, which make the pick and place task very easy. And this video implies that compliant uh, bo robot body makes the robot task much easier. And today I'm gonna talk about uh, the uh, object grasping with the compliant soft hands. So let me first uh, talk about soft robot hands. Um, the re recently, soft robot hands has been actively studied. The starting from the Jamie Grapevine in 2010, and several multi-finger soft hands has been developed. Because these soft hands are made up with uh, compliant soft materials, they are generally have uh, they generally have uh, large acquisition regions for object grasping and more tolerant of uncertainties in perception and action. So these are well suited for many pleasant tasks such as handling delicate, irregular shaped, and unknown objects. However, most of the research is, uh, have, has mainly focused on design and fabrication, and we don't see a lot of advanced usage of soft robot hands, especially closing the loop between soft manipulation and visual perception has been less addressed. So one of the questions we wanted to answer was how can you exploit the compliance of soft hands for learning object grasping? In other words, would the soft hands make the object grasping much easier? So object grasping has been actively studied as well. Uh, traditional robot grasping research have relied on the simulation with a significant prior knowledge such as non-object models, hand models, and the content models to find a stable, uh, stable object grasping. Unfortunately, this approach is not applicable for a known object because we don't have a 3D model. And moreover, predicting contact points between object and soft hands is not really so easy because uh, of the uh, unpredictable deformation of the soft finger. Recently, object grasping started to take advantage of thin neural network models in order to learn object grasping without knowledge of uh, knowledge and instead learn from experience or big data. And most common approach is to use a 2D conversion neural network, uh, which classifies the suitable grasping restorantation from 2D or 2.5D images. It is exciting to see these approaches because now robots are learning from their own experience. But if you step back a little bit and look at all those approaches, you may notice that the old approaches are using the fixed top grasping, which makes sense because but well, top grasping is uh, one of the effective way to uh, approach and grasp the object, especially for those objects lying on the table. However, object grasping is not limited to the top grasping, uh, depending on the manipulation task associated with the object or the location of the object, robot may need to approach from the different directions. And also, if the environments are more constrained, the robots need to make robots need to comply with those constraints in order to approach target objects, such as fetching objects from the shelf or refrigerator. refrigerator. To overcome this limitation, we had the um, question whether it is possible to learn suitable grasp from 3D object shape. In this work, we divide the 3D conversion neural network uh, to learn from the 3D object shape and apply this to object grasping. So the motivation behind this work is to answer these two questions. For the soft hands, how can you exploit the compliance of soft hands for learning object grasping? And for the visual grasp learning, is it possible to learn suitable grasps from 3D object shape? And we hope that the large acquisition region of the soft uh, compliant hands and their high tolerance of perception and actuation make the uh, grasp learning much easier. And we also hope that the predictive grasps from the object shape will guide the soft robot hands to, gr to good grasping. And our approach is combining soft hands and the vision-based grasp learning. And here we present 3D CNN approach for grasping unknown objects with the soft robot hands. And this video shows a grasping example of our system where the 
sort of a hand grasp the unknown object without the knowledge of object models and stable graphs. And the right figure here shows the, our robot system. The soft hands are attached to the end effectors of the master robot, and the depth sensor is attached to the torso of the robot, and it obtains point cloud from the table so that the robot can grasp the object on the table. So our grasping pipeline takes the uh, uh, point cloud as an input, and it predicts grasping direction and wrist orientation to determine the grasp pose. And let me explain one by one. So first, it gets the point cloud from the depth sensor. And first, it runs the planet segmentation in order to get a set of uh, segmented clouds on the table. And first, it runs the uh, voxelization in order to have a voxel grid. Then the voxel grid is the input for the 3D CNN. So first, it detects the suitable grasp direction depending on the shape of the object. And once it is determined, then it goes to the voxel transformation where the voxel grid is transformed in a way that the chosen grasp direction is fixed to some certain direction. In this case, it's a top direction. Then the transformed voxel grid is going to be another input for the 3D CNN. And now the 3D CNN determines the wrist orientation. So once we determine the grasp direction and the wrist orientation, then we can now define the full six tools of freedom grasp pose. So this is the pipeline of our system. And let me explain a little bit about the 3D CNN. So the input is the 3D CNN, the voxel grid, 32 by 32 by 32. Here, one voxel is just a one cubic centimeter. So the maximum size of the object is like 32 centimeter width and height and 32 centimeter depth, which is reasonable size for the object grasping. So the first layer is a convolution layer with a five by five by five filter size. The number of filters is 32 and the stride is two. So we have a much smaller volume output. And the second layer is the 30 by 30 by 30, which is slightly smaller uh, filter size, but the same number of filters. And stride is just one. So we have a slightly smaller volume output. And we do have a max cooling layer in order to have a little bit of a space invariance. And then as a result, we have a six by six by six um, volume output, which is connected, densely connected to the uh, hidden layer. And then we have output for the approaching direction and the wrist orientation. So to evaluate the effectiveness of our approach in object grasping task, we run a set of comparative evaluations. We use the 10 training objects to train our 3D CNN model and evaluate its performance on the other, on the other 10 test objects. So first, we evaluate the accuracy of the grasp pose detection in a test data set. And our approach is compared with the four different approaches, RAND, PCA, SDM, FCN. Here, the RAND is just randomly selecting the opposite direction and the wrist orientation. And PCA is using principal component, component analysis in order to find the principal axis from the 3D voxel grid. And SDM is just a standard as supported by the machine. And FCN is a fully connected network. In other words, it's a, just a standard um, multi-layer perceptron. So render approach here reports the worst performance in terms of accuracy, which makes sense because it's just a random guess. And here, if you look at the FCN, FCN shows the perfect condition, perfect prediction in the grass beam direction, but it turns out that FCN was overfitted to the top grass beam. So it always predicts the top grass beam, top direction rather than considering side grass. And FCN shows a poor wrist orientation prediction. And if you look at the PCA, PCA works originally well, but we notice that it often returns the wrong wrist orientation um, because sometimes the partial, partial voxel grid does not give the clue for the entire shape of the object. And our 3D CNN approach return, uh, learns effectively and predicts well um, with this even uh, partial voxel grid. We also compare the robustness of our approach of the robustness of fiber approaches with respect to noise and occlusions. And to this end, we added artificial noise to the voxel grid or randomly removed some of the voxels to simulate the occlusions. In general, as the number of noise voxels and the number of occluded voxel planes are increasing, the predictions are getting more inaccurate. And I'd like to highlight the PCA is uh, seriously perturbed by the noise voxels because the PCA mainly relies on the principal axis of object to reason about the wrist orientation. So a few number of noise voxels are critical to this approach. 
Uh, so again, FCN is affiliated to the top recipient direction, so it, perf it performs really, really poorly for the risk orientation. And here, our approach clearly outperforms all other approaches. Again, PCA is also seriously affected by noise and occlusions. Uh, this video shows our grasping system on the unknown test objects. Our 3D CNN learns from the training object well generalized to these different objects. Again, the uh, prior knowledge about the test object is not given. For quantitative evaluation, we tried 10 times for each object with a varying location and orientation. Since we have 10 different test objects, we tried 100 times for each of approach. So the total number of grasping trials for this experiment is 500 times. So this plot shows the grasping success rate of our approach and other approaches on the Baxter robot with the softer robot hands. And our approach, 3D CNN, um, achieved 87% successful grasping for previously unseen objects. And it clearly outperforms other approaches such as random PCL uh, SBM and fully connected neural network approaches. Uh, depending on the shape and the pose of the object, the approach, in, the approach in favors side grasping. Here, multiple approach interactions are more effective, especially when the environments are more constrained, where the fixed approach interaction is not always feasible. So in conclusion, we showed the soft robot hands capable of grasping unknown objects without knowledge of object models and stable grasp. So the proposal that 3D CNN learns from the 3D object shape and predicts through the grasp by predicting uh, approach direction and risk orientation. And we noticed the synergy between our 3D CNN grasping algorithm and the soft hands. By the compliant soft hands enabled the 3D CNN algorithm to learn more effectively. And the 3D CNN algorithm guided the soft hands to grasp the object more reliably. So thank you for your attention. Um, I'm happy to and have some questions. Thank you so much. Are there any questions, comments, or remarks? We have a, a microphone in the room. There's a question right here. Hello. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I missed it, but did you include information about the gripper in the uh, in the CNN, in, in the learning of the model? So we discretized the grasp direction and risk orientation. So what we did was we tried one by one, and we got the uh, labeled data, and we trained it through the CNN. So yes, yeah, so the each approach direction and the risk orientation defines the grasping. Um, or the great bird pose. Okay, that, but I mean, is that, is that your question? No, I mean, does it make a difference that the end is a soft end or? Well, actually, this is designed for the soft hands because, well, uh, we wanted to have. Uh, so, the, if you look at the, if you remember the grasping uh, wrist orientation, it's very coarse. But we, because we have a compliant soft hands. We can actually do that with that, but if we use maybe a hard hand, maybe we need to increase the step, the rotation step size, which result in uh, a lot, uh, much, much larger number of output. But we have uh, like four different risk orientation and the six di different approach interaction. Okay, I'm being told that we should move on. Then I would like to thank you one more time for this fantastic presentation. And that